All right, today we're going to make some health bars appear uh, above our entities, <laughs> enemies, and the player, um, so that we can see how much damage we're doing to them, how much health we have left before we die. To do that, we're going to uh, delve into the UI system, which means creating a canvas and putting things on that, which is a fairly sort of uh, big chunk of things to understand and learn. Uh, it's a whole separate thing to everything we've been doing so far. It's not in 3D, it's in 2D. It's going to be layered over our game world. Um, so I think that's probably all we're going to do today is just the health bar thing. Um, but you'll learn a lot that uh, will come in handy later on when you want to do things like, I don't know, menus and stuff like that. Um, before we get into it, I wanted to uh, show a GIF that um, someone who's following this tutorial sent me uh, of their progress. Now, I want to stress, <laughs> I don't know, Mikhail, uh, I'm going to assume uh, that they either have some pre-existing experience with, <laughs> with making games or they've just done a lot of research on their own separately from this tutorial because uh, what they're showing here is uh, way beyond what I've taught you <laughs> and uh, involves a lot of things that I just haven't taught you at all. Um, so definitely don't look at this and think, oh, I should be at that stage. Um, I want to show this partly because it's awesome and gives you an idea of um, uh, what's possible even with just a basic kind of building blocks. You know, it hasn't done any 3D modeling or anything. Um, and also because people often ask, like, can you show me the final game that we're working towards? And the answer is, no, I haven't made it yet. <laughs> this is what you've seen is what we've made uh, doing this in real time, making it up as I go along. So um, that, uh, yeah, let's go on with health bars. So um, what we want is to create a little bar above each character that has... Um, it's going to be the kind of health bars you see in things like Dota or um, uh, old RTSs like Warcraft. Um, and yeah, I guess probably like all MOBAs have something like this. Um, and to do it, we're going to need a canvas. I think we'll just create that first. So um, uh, yeah, if I just click in some empty space down here in our hierarchy, uh, we're going to go to UI and then canvas is in there. When we create it, it's just going to sit in our game world. Um, we can't really see it. I uh, wonder if it would be worth visualizing it. Um, yeah, this is a good tip to know in general. Uh, in fact, yeah, this will be interesting. So the canvas comes with a whole load of components. You don't need to worry about most of them yet. We're going to add an image component to it. So I'm just going to type the word image. And as soon as I do that, the screen goes white. Um, that's that's why I added this is I wanted to know where is the canvas you know because it's transparent normally so you can't see like how big is it is it filling the whole screen or not turns out it is <laughs> um, the color of that image we just added I'm going to change that when you edit a color you can change its alpha down here alpha is is um, let me get this right alpha is opacity so the opposite of transparency so a, a full alpha is it completely um, it's completely solid zero alpha is completely transparent. Um, I just when testing and setting up a canvas, I like to have uh, an image on it so I can see how big it is. Um, and that, let me see what happens if I, right here where it says free aspect, you can change the aspect ratio of, of this is good for like seeing how it will look on different people's computers. Um, I don't want, uh, I want to change one thing about what we have here, uh, which is. Uh, one of these, the scalar, it says constant pixel size. I don't think we want that. Um, I think that means if you make something 10 pixels, it's going to be much smaller on a higher res screen than it is on a lower res screen. I think we want to scale with screen size. This is probably not mega important yet, but it's just, it's the first thing I do when making a new canvas, so we should do it. Um, and when I say scale with screen size, now it wants to know. Um, uh, the aspect ratio, the dimensions of the cut of the screen resolution that we want to match. Um, because if you think about, like, one of the things you'll <laughs> discover about making a PC game, everyone's got different screen sizes, radically different screen sizes. Like ultra wide monitors, you know, something like four times as wide as they are high, and other people are still on five by four, which is almost square, um, which is a nightmare. It is generally accepted that like 16 by 9 is a sort of standard resolution, and if you think, if your game works at that, then that's good. But the um, you don't have to make it perfect for everybody, but you do have to make sure it's not unplayable <laughs> at, at different uh, aspect ratios. And so the reference resolution is just sort of like, you know, uh, I'm going to enter 1280 by 720 here. 
which is just um, standard HD. Um, the actual amounts you enter here, I don't think they really matter. What matters is the aspect ratio. Um, and this is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, so it's probably what you, your, your screen has. Um, and yeah, you don't need to really uh, think about it beyond that. Um, so I think basically what that means is that if we, uh, I don't know if this will work, but let's try it anyway. No, it doesn't work. All right. <laughs> uh, I can't demonstrate what it means, but basically that should uh, be the right setting for us. So uh, we don't need that image anymore. Uh, I'm going to disable it. Uh, you could remove it completely. I'm just going to leave it there because, it, like I say, it's useful sometimes to check what's going on with our canvas. If, for example, we put something as canvas and it's not showing up, first thing we want to know is, is, is the canvas even where we think it is? Um, so uh, what is the next thing to do? Um, we're going to want to get a reference to this canvas. So what we're, what we're eventually going to do is on, you know how our enemy and our player, they all have this health system thing? The health system is going to create a uh, health readout. Uh, excuse me. So what we'll do somewhere in, um, in the start event for this, I'm just moving this around um, to a more logical place. Uh, somewhere in here we're going to write a line that will be like uh, create our health panel um, and because this is, this is a 2D uh, UI element uh, and what I mean by that is it's, it's um, a flat sprite that appears on your screen um, and it's not going to for example get smaller as you go for, as you move your character around or it's not going to get hidden behind a wall um, uh, this thing, I mean, the reason it's called a canvas is because it's, it's as if there's a, there's a canvas over your screen and you can paint directly to that. And uh, so when we create something on the canvas, we need to tell the thing we created, you live on the canvas. You're not out there in the game world, you're on the canvas. Um, so it will be something like create a health panel on the canvas. And for that, we're going to need to revert to this canvas. So the first thing we need to do is, is make sure we can do that. So I'm going to add a Go back, go back to our canvas, add a component, eventually, uh, new script, and I'm just going to call it canvas behavior, just to fit the naming convention we've been using. And this is going to be a really simple script. It's just going to um, uh, it's just going to talk to references. In fact, let's go to our references class here first, and we'll say. Uh, public static is it going to be a game object um, for simplicity yes uh, canvas and so now references has like a slot for us to put the canvas reference in and canvas itself when it starts is going to say references canvas equals uh, my game object. Uh, yeah, and so we do that because this health system is about to say create a health bar on the canvas and now it can just, when it wants to, it can uh, refer to references.canvas. Um, what I just wrote, there's, there's a potential bug here and I hope we hit it. <laughs> um, I'll write it out here in a comment. Um, uh, Somebody in the comments uh, did say that it would be useful to have more for, us to, for me, me to write more comments in the code uh, to remind us of things, which is a good point. I should be doing that more. Um, and I'm just going to say here, um, if we should um, be, um, how am I going to phrase this? Uh, the, pro the potential problem is that this is being this reference is being established in the start event and health system is also going to uh, in fact I'm just going to fix this rather than hoping it hoping that bug happens and then fixing it um, we're about to write a line that involves a reference to canvas um, it's going to be uh, basically we're going to have a prefab for our um, our health bar so it's going to be a public game object health bar prefab and the line we're going to write is instantiate health bar prefab on references 
dot canvas uh, dot transform. Um, so we've used Instantiate before, and like before, we, we have this master copy, this blueprint for what we want to create, uh, which is the health bar prefab. We haven't set that reference up yet, but we will do in a minute. Um, this is going to create a copy of that, and we'll, we'll remember reference to this, and it's going to create it on the canvas. And now this, uh, I think we're using it a bit differently to how we have before. Um, instead of giving it a vector for the position and a quaternion for the rotation, um, that's the super specific way of, of instantiating something where you say like you're going to be here and you're going to be looking over there. Um, in this case, we don't really care about that stuff. It's its default orientation is going to be fine, but what we do need to, to um, tell it is what it's going to be attached to. What are you going to be on? You're going to be on the canvas, and in that case, you give it a the transform. Remember, the transform is the set of information. It's, it's size and rotation and position. Um, it's the canvas's transform that we need to put in here, and that means that um, that the health bar will be will live on this canvas. And I'll show you what that looks like once it's up and running. Uh, anyway, the potential problem is uh, this thing in its start event is referring to this references.canvas, and canvas in its start event is um, that's where that gets established in the first place. So we don't which one of these things is going to run its start event first. We don't know. There is a way to manually order the execution order of individual instances, but I think it's not good to go down that road if you don't have to. Um, generally, you want to write your code so that your code doesn't care what order things get executed in. Or, I mean, obviously, uh, we need to know the start comes before update and things like that, but uh, you don't want to be depending on, oh, I hope Canvas bit canvas behaviors start event happens before my start event because otherwise we're, we're boned um, so uh, we would like this code to work no matter which order these two things run their start event in and luckily there is a really easy way around this uh, because there's another event that things run in startup called awake and so there's awake in their start uh, you can see why I didn't introduce both these things at the same time because they're extremely similar um, and the uh, crucial thing to remember is awake happens before start and in fact I wonder if we could could I write this in uh, let me see if I've got that uh, reference doc and I'm thinking we should be writing some of this stuff in yes is that am I logged in can I edit this oh people are looking at it now that's nice yes I can um, I don't know if this is a pitfall Maybe it's just a thing to remember. Uh, I call it a pitfall. Um, awake happens before start. Uh, and the way I remember it is you wake up before you start your day. Slightly trite way of saying it, but that that's I've never forgotten it. <laughs> um, and in this case, it's super useful just to, that one of these things we know for sure happens before the other one. So in the awake event, we're going to establish the reference. And then in the start event, um, uh, health system is going to refer to it. And obviously, uh, it doesn't sound sustainable if you have all these different things you want to happen in different orders to keep on, you know, trying to help with new events that happen before each other. But actually, I think this is, I don't think that's what we're doing. I don't think we're, uh, you know, laying rail tracks in front of the train as we go <laughs> in a reckless way. Um, I think it's not a bad idea in general to say that awake is where a reference gets established. If there's a reference that needs to be set up, you've got to do it in awake. And then start is a place where it's safe to use references that, that we think have been established. So if, we, if that's our rule, that's our general principle, then um, we should be okay on that basis. Um, yeah, and if we ever, if, I don't know, if we ever mess that up, we should, we, we'll find out about it pretty fast when the game crashes um, and we'll be able to trace what we've done wrong. So, uh, while I remember, since we created, remember we created this slot for the health bar prefab, um, let's go back into Unity and actually establish that. Um, I think, just for simplicity, I'm going to disable the enemies for now, because everyone has this health prefab, uh, sorry, everyone has a health system, uh, us and the, um, uh, and all of the enemies. I'm also going to rearrange these things a little bit, I'm just going to drag the canvas up here. When you're dragging things around in the hierarchy, be very careful that you don't want to drag it onto something. You want to drag it where there's a line. It tells you it's going to go between those things. 
this is just for my own clarity but I was for a while there I was trying to find where the player is and the player is really higher up in, in this list and they should be kind of grouped with the other enemies I think the other entities um, this thing called event system by the way don't worry about it you didn't create it I didn't create it Unity just makes it sometimes <laughs> and you can delete it and the game will still work but it will just every now and then put it back mm. It's something to do with... I think it was when I created a canvas, actually. I probably created it, and it's apparently necessary, but actually, yeah, anyway. Um, what were we doing? We were going to establish, uh, in the health system code that we just ran, um, The we created a slot for health bar prefab, but we haven't set it yet. So uh, I want to drag something in there, but I haven't made anything yet. So on our canvas, um, I guess we haven't really talked about this concept of parenting so this will be a, a, a good thing to learn as well so uh, when I create this this health bar we're gonna make a health bar in our world and then we're gonna drag it out as a prefab um, I'm gonna right click on the canvas and go to UI and go to image and it's gonna create it as a child of the canvas because I created it on the canvas um, the image is a child of it we can see it right there in the center of the screen so um, uh, the the transform for this thing looks a little bit different to the transform for these game objects we've been dealing with. Um, it's pretty similar. It's still basically position, rotation, and scale. But there are some extra settings here, like width and height are different to scale. Um, this is because when you're drawing on a screen, it's just often very useful to be able to say, like, oh, I want this to be 800 by 600. I want it to be, you know, um, some particular s a number of pixels. Remember we said our canvas is 1280 by 720? That's our reference resolution. So if I say something's going to be 640 pixels wide, it's going to be exactly half the screen width. Um, uh, for anyone with a 16 by 9 screen at least, even if your screen is 19, 20 by whatever, um, if I create something on our canvas that's 640 wide, uh, I know it's going to be half of the width at that particular aspect ratio. Um, and so that's why there's a width and height field here. It's just useful to be able to talk in exact pixel figures. And actually, I have to say with um, canvas stuff, with UI, I've never used scale, I don't think. I don't think I've ever changed those values. I just leave them at 1, 1, 1. Uh, you barely ever change rotation, in fact. Um, it's really all about width and height and position. And, and this little nightmare, which we'll get into in a bit, <laughs> it's scary. Um, but uh, you'll see what it's for. Um, okay, so we've made what we've made is a white box. Uh, I'm just gonna like with. Oh yeah, yeah. I thought it wasn't working for a minute. Um, as with the normal transforms, you can kind of you can click. Uh, did I ever explicitly explain this? Maybe I didn't. But you, yeah, you can if you click and hold on the word position X there and then drag, you can drag it around, which is really handy for just uh, doing things by eyeball. Um, so actually position is not the problem, it's uh, just a bit of a weird uh, shape for a health bar. And I would say in particular, its height is too, too big. Uh, we actually want it to be pretty small. So I'm gonna go for something like, um, uh, that looks about right. Maybe a little bit thinner. So we're making these tiny because everyone's gonna have one so that we don't want to clutter up the, the place too much. Um, and for now, we're just going to leave it at that. So we've got more to do to build this health bar, but we have something, we have something, <laughs> and uh, we will call it health, health bar. Um, and now, uh, I'm going to put a space there because it's bothering me <laughs> already. Um, and then we want to make this a prefab, so we just drag it, as always, from the scene to the project folder and drag the health bar not the canvas the canvas is the whole thing and we can make lots of health bars on the canvas it's the health bar that we want to make a blueprint of that we can copy from later um and now we go back to our player and that slot we created uh, in health system again i'm going to move things around a bit just to, for my own clarity I, i'll keep these behaviors together um so that we don't forget there's two separate things going on here uh, health bar prefab there's the slot here's the health bar we made drag it in so our canvas exists our canvas will set its own reference um, the player has a health system the health system when it starts its day it's going to instantiate uh, copy the health bar prefab uh, onto the canvas and 
we want to make sure we know that happened. We're going to test that now. Um, and I think I'll just delete this health bar. Sometimes when you're, when you're working with canvases and you, you're mocking things up that are going to be created at, when you're playing the game at runtime, um, sometimes I leave them on the canvas and just disable them because uh, it's useful to be able to see them to lay them out. But it might get confusing in our case, so let's not. Let's just try playing a game and see if a thing gets created. Yay, there's a little health bar. So it doesn't follow us around. It doesn't reflect our health. <laughs> so two of its primary jobs, uh, I would say, are not fulfilled yet. Um, but we can fix that. Let's, let's do the following around thing first, because that's surprisingly not as hard as you might think. Or well, maybe you wouldn't think it's hard, but I would think it's hard. Because <laughs> um, you're sort of doing something Remember how, how weirdly difficult it was to figure out where the mouse is clicking? Like we have to shoot lasers from our eyes and create a mathematical plane and then check like distance along rays and things. Um, this is a very similar kind of thing. We're, like, we're trying to convert from this 3D thing to a 2D space. And um, uh, what's intuitive to humans is not, not necessarily simple to code. But in this case, there is a nice little line of code to write. It's, I say nice, it's fairly uh, long and complicated, <laughs> but um, uh, we, uh, I'm just going to write it out from my notes. So the thing is, we've created our health thing here. Um, and now in our update, we're going to do something like um, uh, make our health bar follow us move it to our current position. Um, but I can't write that line of code because I don't have a reference to my health bar yet. So let's create one. Um, I think we're going to, so we could create a game object reference, um, my health bar, but I'm, I'm actually going to make it a health bar reference. Wait, do we even have a health bar yet? <laughs> no, I don't think we do, do we? <laughs> Whoops. Uh, skip this line of code for now. Uh, let's go and make a health bar behavior. So, uh, yeah, one other good thing about deleting the health bar from the canvas in our scene is I can't get confused and start editing that one instead of the prefab. I can only edit the prefab because there's only only the prefab exists. Uh, so this is our health bar. Um, we're just going to add a component to it, a new script, and it will just be called, I think, just health bar. You could call it health bar behavior, I guess. Uh, but I think health bar is clear enough. Um, and I guess maybe this wasn't the absolute most logical order to do this in, but um, it's fine. So for now, we're not even going to write the health bar script. We've, we've added it. It exists. That's all we needed. Um, and that lets me do the write the line of code I wanted to write, which is health bar, um, my health bar. So we created a variable to store this reference in. And then when we create it, now let's see. Um, yeah, I'll explain why I've done it this way in a minute. Because uh, it does create an extra step. Uh, so we're going to say game object um, health bar object equals instantiate this. Uh, and then we're going to say my health bar is uh, Go to the health bar object and do get component health bar. Okay, I will recap what we just did because um, it might seem slightly backwards at the moment. <laughs> like I didn't make this a game object, and then I had to go and create a script to allow us to not make it a game object. And then when I created this thing, actually it gives us back a game object, so I had to create a game object after all to store it. And then after that, we uh, finally go to that game object and say, hey, tell us about your health bar um, component which is actually pretty much all, all the code that this thing has running on it. Um, the reason is that what we're going to do now is, oh god, is this going to be even more complicated? <laughs> uh, no, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. Uh, so, uh, all right, uh, I can explain part of it, which is that uh, one line we're going to write somewhere in this update is, so make a health bar follow us, we will do that, but we'll also say make our health bar uh, reflect our health. Remember, that's the other thing that's wrong with it. And for that, we're going to write something like my health bar dot set show health 
and then we'll put something in, in the brackets there. Um, and uh, if the health bar reference was a game object at that point, we would have to do get component to it. Um, and if we can, we want to avoid doing get component in update. Um, we don't want to be doing get component all the time because uh, it's slightly slow. It's not that slow. You actually can do it and it'd be fine. Uh, <laughs> what's really happening is a commenter mentioned that we do, we do this elsewhere, like we do get component in, in, um, in our update here for player behavior is doing get component every frame. Um, this is one of those things that like, the commenter is absolutely right. This, this is not, get component is a slightly slow function um, and you should avoid using it in update where possible. Um, but also don't worry about it because <laughs> I, I was very slow to learn Unity and it was partly because of warnings like that. Like someone said that to me early on and I thought that meant you just couldn't, like just don't ever do it. And that makes it really slow to get things done. Like you have to just, there's so many steps to just add one thing. In fact, we've seen it today. <laughs> I Just to avoid that, I ended up complicating my code in so many different ways just to work around it. Um, and I probably should have just made this thing a game object and we could have done it um, every frame. Um, but we'll stick with the way we've done it because it is technically better. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the bottom line is don't worry about it. Um, but this is why we're doing it this way. Uh, it is a bit more efficient. So uh, we've created the health bar object, then we've gone and fetched its health bar component, and um, we will now make it follow us by doing my health bar dot transform dot position equals, and I'm going to have to refer to my notes here because the next line is somewhat complicated. Um, it's this whole thing. Uh, camera dot world to screen point uh, let me paste it in so we'll, we'll, we'll see the engine make sense of it um, for now we're going to write camera dot main and this is all uh, garbage code from my from the place I pasted it from which is our current game uh, tactical breach wizards uh, we have this code in in that project so I just ripped it out of there um, Okay, yeah, the, now this is a valid load of code. And what it says is uh, that our health bar's position should be, uh, we'll go to the camera. Uh, we can get a reference to the camera with camera.main and experienced programmers are screaming in anguish as I say that because camera.main is very slow, <laughs> much slower than get component. Um, uh, but it has this function called world to screen point um, where you give it a world coordinate, uh, which is our own position. Our, Remember, this thing is this thing is a health system. This is attached to our player. It's attached to our enemies. Um, in the, when the health system says, "Hey, what's our position?" We're talking about a, a place in three D space. Um, and when we tell our health bar, "Here's your position," this is a two D space. Uh, so we're we're asking the camera to convert, take this three D thing, and turn it into two D. Um, and amazingly, there's just a function for that. It's just one line of code. Um, so uh, the fact that camera main is slow, we, we will address that uh, at some point. But for now, let's just test that this works. We should have a health bar that follows us around now. Yes, <laughs> it follows us around. Doesn't look quite right, does it? Because um, it is inside us, <laughs> which is an unusual feature for a health bar. Um, what we probably want to do is have it be offset vertically a bit. So what if it was, um, the stories we could do this, we could try and make it offset it on the canvas and say, hey, you're 20 pixels higher than you think you are. Um, or we could offset the position we pass in. Um, I wonder which is best. I think actually it's probably best to offset the position we pass in. Let's try this. So this is. Uh, different to how I did it in practice, but um, remember I said this is taking a 3D position and turning it into a 2D position. Uh, if we want to add to it, we're going to add a vector 2, not a vector 3. Um, but just as you know, you've used vector 3 dot up a lot. Um, oh, it doesn't like this, does it? What's the issue so far? Oh, 
That's kind of interesting. Okay, ignore me. We're not going to use vector two. We're going to use vector three. <laughs> um, what I said was absolutely logical, um, but uh, turned out not to be true. <laughs> so this this function it does convert a three D position into two D space, but it turns out technically, uh, in terms of the code, what it returns is still a vector three. It's a it's a position that can store a three D position. It isn't storing a 3D position, it's storing a 2D position, but um, it could. So uh, that's why we're still going to call the vector 3 hotline and ask it for the up thing. Um, and I multiplied it by 3, I think we want to go... Oh no, no, that's wrong actually. Because uh, I think vector 3 dot up would just be one pixel up. Um, so let's actually do it by 30, something like that. Let's see what that looks like. If this doesn't work, I might just go back to doing it in um, world space, which is how I've done it before. No, that looks good. That looks... Oh, that's interesting. So it gets closer to us as we get closer to the camera and further from us as we go further away. It's probably a matter of taste as to whether that's the right way to do it. I think... Hmm. Do I like that? Maybe I do. <laughs> um, should we just... Like, we can... We've got time. We can try the other way. It might just be interesting just to see what the difference is here. So that was adding a um, adding some canvas space on top of us before we decide where the health bar goes. Now let's try, uh, before we ask it for the screen space position, we add uh, three ups to our world position. Uh, this, is, this is like the player's actual current position. Uh, let's add something onto that. So let's say, rather than saying, take my position and put it on screen space, we say, take the position three meters above my head and put that on screen space. Um, that's what we do in Tactical Breach Wizards, and it seems to work well. Yeah. So that, yeah, I think I prefer that. that you can, You can sort of believe it <laughs> in a weird way. Like, you can see where it is in world space, right? Whereas before it was changing, as it got closer to us, it was getting closer to them. I think also, uh, if we, uh, I guess this won't work at all, no. Uh, if I could move the camera and I moved it directly above us, think about what would happen then. If we are moving it upwards in screen space uh, on the canvas, then when you look directly down at us, uh, I will just do this camera angle. Um, if we look directly down like this, the health bar would still try and be above us um, which I guess would be all right, but I think that would feel slightly wrong. Uh, anyway, I th I like this. I think it's a bit too high, isn't it? We could go. It doesn't have to be three. It could be two, two meters above us. Um, and next, we'll have it show health. I'm just going to check that it looks alright. Yeah, that looks great. Um, yeah, so now we want to edit our health bar prefab. Uh, I haven't made it green yet, and there's a reason for that. Because uh, actually, I want to... Uh, I'm going to right click on, on health bar here, and I'm going to say UI image. So I'm going to create another image, and this is uh, on our existing image. So I've been using the word on for um, to mean... Uh, Basically, in coding terms, this is called a, a parent and a child. Uh, the canvas is a parent, and the health bar is a child of the canvas. The This new image is a child of the health bar. I'm going to call this... Um, what am I going to call it? Um, filled part. And this is going to go green. So whether it's white there, we're just going to pick a nice lurid green. Um, as you'll see, it's it's square again, <laughs> which is what we didn't like about the um, uh, the original. Uh, we're not going to try and like so our parent health bar, which is this is almost like the frame of the health bar, or it's the whole thing. Um, that had a width of fifty six point nine and six point one height. Uh, we could type those values in here, but actually, there's a better way of doing it, and it's this weird widget here. Um, so that the secrets like magic spell <laughs> that I didn't know for ages of the Unity. There's all these things, you can click on all these different ways of anchoring um, 
uh, this thing. And this, what this determines is where, uh, this is a child and it's got a parent, where on its parent should it be? Um, and uh, clicking these isn't gonna do much at the moment. It just means that like, if we stretched it, if we made it bigger, which bit of it would stay fixed? So if you say we're anchored to the top right and then you make it bigger, it'll go like, root like this. In fact, should we try that? Just, would that be useful to see? Um, so I've just said anchor in the top right, and now when I get bigger, nope, what I said doesn't happen at all. <laughs> uh, nope, okay, abort explanation. I don't really know what that does then. <laughs> uh, but we don't need it, that's not what we want anyway. Uh, we're gonna do something like this, where we stretch. Uh, the, all these ones with a blue arrow are stretch. But before we click it, we're gonna hold down Shift and Alt. <laughs> this is this is madness, but uh, it, I mean, in fairness, it is spelled out on screen. It says Shift, also set pivot, Alt, also set position. Um, those two things are true. That is what happens with these the Milton's. It doesn't totally explain to me why it seems to unlock and anyway, uh, all these other options. Uh, I don't fully understand this, so you don't need to fully understand this, but hold down Shift and Alt and click this bottom right one. And this is a super useful thing. I use this all the time. It just means fill the space you've got. So this filled part is on the health bar and we just told it fill all the space you've got. And we didn't have to enter the 56.9 and 6.1, it's just figured out, oh, I need to be this big. Um, and so, oh, actually, we're, we're gonna change that slightly because something I said was true. <laughs> I'm not completely wrong about this. Um, uh, are we gonna do it this way at all? Maybe we're not. Maybe I've told you a lie. Uh, oh, damn it. <laughs> uh, let me... I think we're actually going to click this one. Yeah. Okay, no, we've done everything right. We've done everything in the right order. Um, that was a convenient way of getting us to the right size. We're not going to stay on this. This would mean it always fills the whole thing, no matter what. And then if we... When you lose health, we don't want it to fill the whole thing, right? We want to take some off. So we actually want to be able to specify your width um, in as a particular number. Um, so uh, luckily doing that stretchy thing and just now set our width to 57. Um, and we're clicking this one. What this one means is it will stretch to fill the height of the health bar. So if we later change our mind and decide this is too thin and we stretch the health bar, we don't need to resize both elements, we'll just resize the parent one but it's no longer gonna to stretch to fill the width because in code, we are gonna tell it how wide it should be. Um, and if we did the, the full stretchy one, there's a way to make that work out, but it just isn't the way that I've got planned. <laughs> um, it's, I think it's slightly less easy to understand how you do it with that one. So we're gonna do it with this one, which means stretchy height, but a fixed value for width. And then as I change the width, we should see it, it uh, acts like a health bar. Um, the background, obviously, probably we want it to be black rather than white. So I'm gonna, I just click the parent health bar here and change that to black. And now this is kind of neat. We can see how uh, it will behave. Um, I guess I just have to set this back to 59. <laughs> um, let's, uh, let's use some round figures here. Let's just have the width be 60 and the height be uh, 5. And the fill part, just type in 60 here. Um, yeah, that's all good. In fact, you know what? If we're going to be custom... No, we're happy. This is fine. This is fine. This is enough. <laughs> Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Okay, so now we have a filled part, uh, and it, when it is resized, it will correctly fill the right part. Um, I guess maybe I'll just demonstrate uh, a bit more about how these anchors work. If I set this one instead, um, and then I change its width, it's going to go from both sides. That's actually not, I mean, slightly weird way of doing health bars, but I've seen games that do, do them that way. Uh, if I set it over to the right here, then when I change the width, it's going to shrink from that side. Um, and I guess that's about it. Those are all the ones that make sense. And obviously, the one we want is left to right, because uh, that's the more conventional way of doing it. Um, and now, we already created a health bar behavior thing. Uh, we haven't done anything to it yet, so let's double click that. 
And what we want to do in this code is change the size of that green bar. And we will need a reference to it. So I'm going to write public image. Uh, and as I write image, it doesn't autocomplete. And in fact, what it did just then is it, it autocompleted to image conversion. We don't want that. Um, so I don't know, because our versions of Visual Studio are a little bit different. I don't know for sure if you have this, but on my uh, Visual Studio at least, I've got this green button. I didn't know what this did. I hadn't really paid any attention to that until today. But do you remember the disaster episode <laughs> where um, really early on, I just hit a problem I've never seen in Unity or Visual Studio ever before, and it was disastrous. It completely changed it. Like the word vector lost its meaning. Uh, the reality fell apart. It was because as I typed the word vector, um, and I didn't put a number on it, uh, this version of Visual Studio jumped in and said, oh, you must mean the mathematical concept of vectors. I've got a whole library about that. I'm going to include this library. And now all that library has a definition for everything else you've used. And now I don't know which one you mean. Uh, it was way overzealous. And I found a way to turn off that feature, um, which is good. <laughs> um, uh, but the downside is when you start to write some code and you want to talk about images, well, images are a UI thing. and the default behavior that, that Unity creates when you say new script doesn't include any UI code. It doesn't know about UI concepts. Um, but they're there somewhere in the library. So in this visual, version of Visual Studio, at least, I can click this green plus to say, I'm not only interested in autocomplete things that you, were, that you know for sure about. I also want to know about just like in the wider world of Unity. Do, do you, you know, I'm talking about image. I'm pretty sure I'm right that image is what I want. Are you sure you don't know what it means? <laughs> Is there anything in Unity that's that's just the word image? And after I click the plus, I get those autocomplete options. I don't want this top one that has the word experimental in it, and that scares me. I want this one, uh, which is this thing at the end, UnityEngine.UI. This is it's called the namespace that it's in, uh, but you can think of it as like a library, like a dictionary. Um, and if I click that, it's going to. Uh, it's fine with me saying image now, and also it added a line up here, UnityEngine.UI. So if you don't have that green plus, um, I apologize that I don't know that in advance. Um, but if you don't have that green plus, what you'll have to do is write this line using unityengine.ui. And you just have to type that out. Um, and after you've done that, it'll know what image is. And this is a good rule to know in general. If you're, uh, you know, if someone tells you, oh, just write this line of code and you start writing it and it rejects it. It says, I don't know what that concept is. It's almost always because there's, you, there's a line you need up here, a using line. Uh, which just means, hey, I'm going to be talking about some UI concepts, so just bear that in mind. Uh, the reason that it doesn't just include all the stuff by default is there are loads of different things you might be doing with, with Unity, things like AI and rendering and all kinds of complex things. And if all of those namespaces were included, if all those dictionaries were active all at once, as you start typing, it would be suggesting so many obscure concepts and the thing you actually want would be buried like seven things deep. That's the theory anyway. Um, whether that's actually true in practice, who knows. Uh, anyway, once we've got uni using Unity Engine.UI up there, it will let us talk about an image. And we need an, uh, a name for our image. And I'm just going to call it Filled Part because that's what the actual object is called as well. Um, and so, one way to do this is we could write something in update that, that was doing something along the lines of um, ask our health system how much health it has and set our bar accordingly. We're not going to do that because uh, to write that I need a reference to our health system and right now um, what I really want to do, this, this health bar, this is not a health system. This is just the health bar. This is a, uh, a display it's almost like the it's like a monitor that we've plugged into the computer, and the computer is the health system that's going to do all the maths and figuring out what the actual health is. Um, all the monitor's got to do is just show it, and so we want it to be as dumb as possible. Um, and it's nice anytime you can write a new bit of code that is really just simple, uh, like all it just does one thing, and it doesn't know anything. You just have to tell it, like we're just going to tell this thing. Here's the fraction of health we have left. Just show that fraction. Don't ask any questions. <laughs> you want to know where I am or what my max health is versus my uh, and what my current health is? You don't get to know that. Shut up. <laughs> Just show the health. Um, and so we're going to write a method that does exactly that. It's going to be a public void because it doesn't return anything. Um, show health fraction. 
And we open some brackets, and it's going to take an argument. The argument is just going to be a float um, called fraction. So uh, it's been a little while since we wrote our own method, maybe. So let me see where we did this before. We did take damage, didn't we, on our health system. We wrote a method, um, and take damage, is, we needed to know how much damage we're going to take. So we define this damage amount, uh, but we don't return anything. We don't tell the person damaged us anything. We just uh, deal with it. Um, and now we're doing something very similar with our health bar. We created a new function. It's public because the health system will need to talk to it. It will need to uh, dial in and say, hey, I need you to show you health show this health fraction. So it's got to be public. Um, it's void because it doesn't report anything back. Like the health system tells us to display the health. We don't tell it whether we did or not. We don't tell it anything that happened. We don't need to. Uh, we're just going to do it. And in order to do it, we need to know what fraction do you want me to display. That's all I need to know. That's my one question. I'm a dumb goon, and I will do as I'm told. I just need one piece of information. Just tell me the fraction, boss. That's all you need to say. Um, and we're going to write something that, that scales the filled part to uh, the fraction provided. Um, so how would we do that? To set, we can do things like filled part um, dot tra rect transform um, dot size delta. That is the uh, the width and height thing we were talking about earlier, these values. Uh, remember, those are different to our 3D objects, so that's why we're having to write some code we've never written before. Um, this, uh, we're not going to mess with scale values. Oh, we could have messed with scale values. <laughs> we're not going to. We're, we're doing it this way now. Oh, should we? Damn it, that makes way more sense. Let's mess with the scale value. Okay, let's just do this. Sorry. Um, uh, local scale equals... Um, yeah, I was just thinking, like, we were going to record what its initial width is and then multiply the initial width by a fraction to get its current width and then set that. But I just remember that's exactly what scale does, right? Is it? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let, let's test this. What I'm now thinking is, yeah, we can just change the x scale. And the beauty of that is the default x scale, the normal one, is 1. So if we pass in a fraction, we just set the x scale fraction to, to whatever fraction we get. So... This is a better way of doing it. Um, so we want to set our local scale to basically whatever it currently is, uh, well, to a new vector 3. Uh, the x part of the vector 3 is going to be whatever fraction we were provided. That's, that's what we want to do. Uh, if, you, if we've been asked to display the fraction half, uh, in fact, let's just go back and do this. Um, so if the player or the enemy that, that owns us has told us to display a fraction of a half and we set our x scale to a half look at that that's exactly what we want to show um, so that's why this is a good way of doing it and i should have thought of it sooner um, and then the other two coordinates we just want them to be the same um, so actually we wrote rect transform here uh, that's because it's a that's what this is. It's a rect transform, which is different to a normal transform. It just accounts for its differences. I think you can get away with writing transform there, but I guess we're, the way we did it is correct. Um, I mean, actually, why are we doing this? Sorry. Um, we know exactly what a scale is going to be, don't we? It's 1-1. One, one. Um, so whatever fraction we're given, that's its x scale. Its other two scales are just 1 in both dimensions. That's what it currently is. That's what it should be. Um, I was going to write, if we wanted to make sure that we keep its y and z coordinates exactly the same, we can do things like write that dot y and then that dot z, but that becomes a monster line of code. Um, that's appropriate if you're working in like, this thing is nested inside this thing, is nested inside this thing, and this thing has a scale of 0.5, and that thing inherits its scale, and this thing's adjusting it to 0.3 and it becomes very difficult to know um, or you don't want to be making assumptions about well I assume it's scale 1 uh, but actually our thing is scale 1 and it should be scale 1 and we shouldn't change that so we we will make that assumption just in general the scale so this filled part of the bar it doesn't have any children it's uh, it's not a parent itself 
its scale is not going to affect other things. Uh, it's very simple, and it's we can be reasonably sure we're not going to want to extend this in any fancy way. It's just a health bar. It's always going to do this. So it's safe to just say its scale in those other ways is just going to be 1-1. One, one. And like I say, if you if we wanted to change it for some aesthetic reason, if we thought it needed to be a bit less tall, uh, we would change these values. Uh, we could do things like if I do one there and one there, now we've got a little bit, bit of a border on it. Um, I wouldn't change the scale for that. So scale one one is a safe assumption. I talk for a long time justifying something when I'm a, a little bit unsure about whether it's okay to do. <laughs> um, yeah, that should work. So that now we've got a function that will set that where the bar will reflect whether the fraction we've, we've been passed. Next thing we need to do is actually provide that fraction. Um, actually, no, sorry. Before we finish on this, there's one more thing we haven't done, right? which is um, the health bar, we created a slot for the filled part, but we haven't set it yet. Uh, you know, we use the word filled part and that is called filled part, but um, we need to specify this is what we mean. We mean this. Um, and so this thing, this slot is for an image. So I was able to drag, what I really dragged in there was a game object, but Unity is clever enough to know, oh, this is a game object that has an image on it. You must mean the image part of it. Um, Yes, that's all done, and now we need the health system to... Uh, it's going to do something... Oh yeah, in fact, we've got, we've got a note right here. So we're going to do um, myhealthbar.showhealth. I think that's show health fraction, isn't it? Uh, but we'll change that when we come to actually write the line of code. Um, I guess we can write my health bar dot show health and I hit I can't remember if I mentioned this before but if you hit control J uh, to get that auto complete menu up if it's not there and show health fraction is indeed correct so the trick is what do we write here what is our fraction um, we know our health but we don't want to pass in on just our health because our health could be four <laughs> we can't ask the bar to display four uh, it needs to know four out of what did you originally have four do you originally have eight uh, that's a different bar uh, so, we need a concept of max health, and uh, let's think about how we do this, because really, the existing value we've written is our max health. It's also our current health, it's both, but um, we have lots, we have three different entities that all have this value set, um, and uh, if we create a new float called max health, um, uh, then we've got to go around setting that to whatever health currently is on every prefab. We have to go into, um, uh, I'll show this visually because it's, uh, to make it less abstract, if I click on the player, um, now their health is there. Uh, it's not showing max health. Oh, because I haven't saved. <laughs> um, I've saved now, so we should see a slot now for max health. A new slot is going to be zero. We have to go around all the different entities, like copying this health and pasting it into the max health slot, which is not a big deal. I could have done it in the time I took to complain about it. <laughs> but uh, like any programmer, I would much rather uh, spend 10 times as long uh, being slightly smarter about it um, than to just uh, actually fix the problem the, the obvious way. <laughs> um, so, uh, what I'm really saying is we need to rename this variable. And the reason I'm being especially uh, verbose about this is this is a good thing to know. It's, it's a pitfall and it's a, a new bit of code to know, which is if I I think this should be max health, and we should create a new variable called current health. In fact, I'm going to call it current health right now. Um, uh, I can rename this variable just fine because it's it's already zero everywhere. It's not going. We don't have any data uh, stored under the current health slot. Remember, you create a variable like this, you make a slot in the inspector. Um, this health value. That's what we've done on. We've done it on three different entities. Um, you could be two years into making your game and everything in your game has a health value and you've custom set it on every single thing. If you change the name of this health value, even if you use 
the um, uh, I've forgotten what shortcut is for it. Uh, even if you click rename here, which is the nice sort of friendly way of renaming something, you'll lose all the data. <laughs> Everywhere you set a health value, you'll lose it. Um, and you'll see, in fact, hey, a perfect demonstration. Um, if you missed that, you can rewind the video a bit. That current health that I set to 10, I typed that in manually. I, I entered some data that was valuable data, but because I renamed it to current health, it loses the data. Um, this is sort of a technical limitation of Unity. It sort of, it, it only knows what the thing is currently called. I don't know, it's not worth trying to explain how it works on the, on the back end. So I want to change the name of this, but before I do it, um, there's a special thing you can write to ask Unity to um, remember its previous life. <laughs> That's a fancy way of saying it, but basically this, this health variable, its current life is, is as the word health. We're now going to rename it, give it a new name of, of max health. Um, and when we do so, we want Unity to remember, hey, this is the thing we used to call health. Uh, sorry. Um, so I'm going to type the word formally in square brackets, and you're probably just going to type this out. But with my magic green plus, that I don't know if you have, um, when I click that, it knows, oh, yeah, you, you must mean formally serialized as. Um, Yes, okay. So this is a little bit complicated. It is worth knowing though, because like I say, if you don't know this, you can just lose a load of data when you rename a variable. Um, I'm go it's going to be ultimately uh, health in brackets and quote marks. So formula zero as open brackets, quote marks, health. Um, that's also what it's currently called right now because I haven't done the rename yet. But I think I wanted to point out before we go any further is as I did that with my magic green plus, it added this line Unity. So using Unity Engine dot serialization. Uh, if you don't have the magic green plus, you'll need to type that out um, for it to let you do this. So uh, this um, write this to tell Unity not to lose our data when we rename. Uh, variable. This was its old name. Uh, and now I'm going to rename it. I hope this works after all this. <laughs> uh, it's so weird that F2 is not rename anymore. Uh, I'm going to type max max health. So I actually uh, you can do this on the right click menu but I it's control R control R. I have to hit control R twice. Um, and now I've saved it. Formally serialized as you write this first, by the way. Don't don't rename the variable and then write this. Uh, you've got to write it first. Like while it's still called health, remember it. Now I'm going to change it. And then when we go back to, yay! It said max health and it is set to ten. Uh, and if we go through our enemy that only had one health, it's now got one max health. When we go to our big enemy that had four health. It's now got four max health. Uh, so that's a bit of a bomb defusal <laughs> type rope <laughs> act. Uh, it's worth making a big deal of because, like I say, if you don't know that and you don't know how to avoid it, uh, you can just lose a whole bunch of data. Or you can get in a situation where you are now scared to rename your variables. Like, you know this name is the wrong name now and it's confusing, but you can't rename it because you, you're going to lose all your data. That's a bad situation to be in as well. Um, and health... I have done this exact thing where I already had a variable called health and then introduced one called current health and I think I'll remember that health means max health and not current health because uh, there's a one called current health so obviously that's the current health but then in isolation you are writing a bit of code that says oh I want to deal whatever this guy's um, uh, when this person's health drops below five do this and you write health less than five You've written the wrong thing because that actually is secretly max health. So it's important to get your variable names correct, um, as clear as they could possibly be. Now our current health actually, um, I made it public. It doesn't need to be public. Let's not make it public because uh, it's misleading. We don't want to set it in the inspector. Um, instead, on start, uh, we will set our current health to our max health. That makes sense, right? Uh, when a thing is created, its current health value should be set to whatever its max health value. What we don't want to do is, is be setting the current health in the inspector. Um, unless you wanted to create some custom scenario where some units start damaged or something, you, then you 
by all means make it public if you're going to do that. But the downside is every every unit that you don't want to be damaged at the start, you've got to go around and manually set their health value to manually set their current health to their max health in the inspector, which is crazy. Um, and if you ever change their max health, you've got to change their current health as well. We don't want to be doing that. Uh, this is anytime something's like a, a universal rule that you know logically must be true. Write it in code so it always is true. Um, on start, we'll set our current health to a max health. And the whole reason we created a max health value is that we are now going to uh, pass that fraction to our health bar. So we're going to say current health divided by max health. That's the fraction. And uh, in order to test this, did I save that? Yes. Um, let's re-enable... Uh, let's re-enable the big enemy. Uh, I hope... I have explained that you can disable and enable things with this checkbox, right? I might have just done that and not explained it. Anyway, you can. Uh, when you uncheck it like this, it basically doesn't exist. Um, there are some exceptions where it can be enabled or disabled at, um, while the game is running. Uh, but yeah, that's a really useful way of just turning things on and off. Um, this guy starts awfully close to us. Uh, so yeah, let's see if we both have health bars. Or if we get a crash. Oh, uh, this is a good opportunity. I don't know what the crash is yet, but um, uh, I've changed something and I wanted to remember to mention it. Um, this thing hit an error and when it hit the error, it paused the game because I told it to. And I strongly advise you do this as well. This is a little thing called error on pause right here. Um, by default, it's off. So when the game hits an error, it'll carry on going as long as you know the error didn't actually completely stop it from being able to understand what time is. Um, it'll carry on going. I don't think it should. I think you want error on pause um, because you can get into a terrible mess where it is... Um, it's hit an error, and then because of that error, it hasn't done something that you think it, that you assume it will have done, and then it'll hit another error, and the danger is you waste your life chasing that second error, and the second error is, is saying this code is wrong, this code is wrong, this code is wrong. You, that, you can't refer to the same; doesn't exist or whatever. And you're looking at that code, and that code is right. It's absolutely right, and it is right. There's nothing wrong with that code. The problem is with the earlier error. That then creates the other error. As soon as there's an error, you just want everything to stop and you want to fix it because it's not worth trying to figure things out uh, like that. Uh, I'm going to add that to the document right now while I think of it. Um, uh, what is where is that tab that we just did that? In the console tab, um, turn on error on pause. If you don't, uh, you might hit other errors that tell you perfectly good code is wrong. Fix the first one <laughs> before continuing. Um, okay, let's find out what our actual error is, because <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's probably just a reference we forgot to set. The variable health bar prefab of health system has not been assigned. Yes, okay, I know what this is. Um, this is the big enemy. It's got a health system, um, which I'll move up. Uh, but it doesn't know what the health bar prefab it should be creating from is yet. Uh, so we need, need to drag that into the slot. So yeah, when we created this health bar system, uh, we added a field to our health system for the health bar prefab. We set it on the player but we didn't go around and set it on everything else. It's a bit of a pain that we need to. Ideally, I would like to have somewhere in code that I can just say, hey, go get the health bar prefab, and then because the code is the same on all of them, that would work for all of them. We can't do that with our current system yet. We would need to build some kind of architecture for doing that. Um, and it's not a huge headache. This isn't, it's not like I have to go through every enemy and set it for every enemy. Uh, these four enemies are all instances of a prefab, so I will go into that prefab right now and say, hey, your health system, let me tell you about this health bar prefab. This is what you're going to be displayed. 
it also means we could have different health bars for um, different units. So enemies, for example, can have a red health bar and we could drag that in there instead and have a different one for the player. Um, and now that I've done that once for this enemy prefab, every one of these instances is going to have that set. Uh, so yeah, if, if we'd end up in a position where every single instance of an enemy in our whole scene was gonna have to manually have that health bar prefab reference set, that would be a warning sign to me that we've done something wrong. There's a better way to structure it. Um, the fact that each type of enemy needs that manually set, it's a bit of a pain, um, but it's not worth building the architecture to make that slightly simpler. So let's get back to testing. Hoping to see two health bars. Yes. And when I shoot him... <laughs> not what I expected. Did I do the division the wrong way around? That, I mean, that health bar got bigger, didn't it? Uh, this is the health system. Current health divided by max health. That's right. Oh my god, no. Okay, yep, I see what the problem is. Here's the problem. Max health divided by, uh, reduced by damage amount? That's not right. We want current health. Um, so, debatably, uh, these, that's the only place the max health is referenced, right? Oh, this is a, a useful tip. If you double click on a variable to select it, it'll also select every other place it's mentioned. So I'm just scrolling up and down looking for highlights here and I can see max health is only referenced in three places and they're all correct. So yeah, because uh, we took, previously we only had one health value, I renamed it to max health. Well, the damage code was changing the old health value. The old health value is now max health, so it's reducing our max health. And so we saw the bar go up because our max health was going down, but our current health was still constant. So we actually had more than 100% health. Uh, so it's kind of nice that, the, like, it's good to know that health bar works even with crazy data. <laughs> Okay, that's nice and clear. Aha, <laughs> we, we see another problem. It doesn't go away when the uh, thing dies. Um, yeah, uh, that's, that's an easy fix. All we do there is um, when the health system is destroyed, we want it to also destroy its health bar. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, so when the enemy dies, the health system dies because the whole enemy object is destroyed and the health system lives on the enemy object. The reason we're hitting this error that, that seems like a new one, it is a new one, uh, is because the health bar, I should have showed you this actually, let's, let's go back into play mode and uh, I'll pause. Uh, our health system code, remember we asked it to create the health bar on the canvas and that's what it's done. And so we see it in this nested structure, this kind of hierarchy, um, where there's a child and a parent and another parent. Um, so the health bars are on the canvas, and then for each health bar, its filled part is on the health bar. Uh, let me, if I just hit F right now. Okay, so when you, if you want to look at the canvas in the scene view, you can discover some strange things. Uh, one is, it seems awful slow to move the camera around, doesn't it? That's because this thing is vast. Uh, let me see if I can even find the game world. Uh, yes, there it is. There's the game world. <laughs> so that's how big our canvas is. Why is the canvas infinitely vast? Um, ask Unity. It's not my problem. Uh, it's to do with something to do with scaling and definition. We can make it smaller, but there's no point. Um, uh, so... What was I trying to do here? Oh yeah, um, another tip for when you do want to see the canvas at runtime. I mean, it's slightly awkward because we can't... So if we click on the game tab, we can see the, the two things together. Uh, if we click on the scene view, the, the HUD is completely separate from the game world. Uh, but uh, just to make it easy to look at, you can click a 2D button here. Uh, so this is on the scene tab, you just click 2D. And then again, with the health bar selected, I'm going to hit F and it will take us over to there. And this is a much more logical way of seeing a canvas. In some ways, it's kind of interesting to see the, the canvas separate from the game world, just so you can see what is on the canvas and what is on uh, in the game world. Um, yeah, I can't remember why I was doing that. Oh yeah, just to explain about parents and hierarchies. I mean, this I, I think I have explained this before, because I remember 
explaining why this is called the hierarchy is because you can nest things under under each other um, and yeah uh, so these things are not getting destroyed when the enemy is getting destroyed because look they're totally different game objects there's no reason that like deleting uh, if I delete the enemy here health bar doesn't get destroyed why would it um, there's nothing telling it to whereas the health system and the enemy behavior and all the things on the object those get deleted when you delete the object because they belong to it um, whereas this uh, the connection there is something we created. So what I want to do is when the health system is destroyed, destroy the other thing. And there's an existing way of, of detecting that. If we just write on destroy and hit enter, it knows what we're talking about. It creates this event, this method, um, where we get to say what should happen when it's destroyed. So that we could also like have it play an explosion sound effect or you know, a burst of particles could come out on, on destroy. Uh, but for now, all we want to do is say... Uh, destroy my health bar dot game object. When you're using destroy, you always want to make sure you're destroying a game object. Uh, if you just call it on the health bar, I think it will destroy the health bar behavior on it and not the game object itself, uh, which is almost never what you want. Uh, we're going to do this and check it fixes the bug. that because of the bug um, yeah that's fine uh, and so now let's re-enable all our little enemies this 2d scene view is not really useful for this there we go uh, and see if they have health bars they do <laughs> and they're coming for me so their health bars are not terribly useful because they only have one health so you never really see them oh actually the, the one thing they are useful for is well, one thing those enemies are useful for is now that we're getting hit a lot, we can see how much health is taking off us. That's one of the main th reasons I wanted health bars is is that this collision damage thing was so ambiguous. You just didn't know, it. like, was that a lot of damage? Was that nothing? And now I can see when I'm dead, which is nice. Um, I think... Oh, yeah, this is this is a bug I was looking for just now. Is um, When we stop playing, we get an error. This doesn't matter because we stop playing, you know, um, that's something that doesn't happen <laughs> in real life uh, that's not strictly true is it uh the player will stop playing our game at some point if if we're failures as game designers i guess eventually they'll have to go back to life um but uh this particular i mean a it doesn't matter if you get an error and you quit the game because you, you're done um but also I, this is only happening because we're killing the process in a particular way anyway the reason this is happening is that when we destroy the health bar uh, when we destroy the health bar's game object, we don't check first that the health bar itself exists. Now, in our code, we never say to destroy a health bar. There's no reason it shouldn't exist. We created it. Nothing ever destroys it, except us. Uh, but when you stop playing, that destroys it. So I guess to keep Unity happy, we can do if my health bar not equal to null, then, uh, then we'll destroy its game object. Because I don't think it minds if we try and destroy something that doesn't exist, but it minds that we're trying to, when we're telling it what game object to destroy, we want to talk to the health bar and say, hey, what's your game object? And if the health bar has already been destroyed, it's like, oh, no, I don't understand. Um, so yeah, let me just verify that, that fixes that problem. I mean, it is worth fixing this, not because the problem itself is a problem, but because having your console flooded with errors every time you stop playing is going to get confusing it's going to you're going to think wait what's broken and if you get used to it that's almost worse because then when you have a real error <laughs> you won't notice that it's happening yeah okay that error has gone away now um so are we done was there something else oh yeah there's one more thing uh, i was just going to give them two health instead of one or maybe three health so as always, we open up the prefab, not not an individual instance, and max health is going to be three. Yeah, that feels a lot better. Those those things having three health, I think, would have felt bad without the health bar. This is something that's kind of worth knowing, um, worth keeping in mind, is that like visualization is not purely cosmetic. When you know how much damage a thing is doing that changes the feel of the weapon it changes your 
gameplay decisions about what weapon to use, about what decisions to make. Um, making things clearer and communicating more information to the player is fundamental. It makes a big difference to how things work. And giving these lozenges three health <laughs> without a health bar just would have been annoying, just been weird. Like, why didn't that shot kill him? It killed that one, but it didn't kill this one. What's going on? Uh, as soon as there's a health bar, it's like, oh, okay, I see it chipping down, and it, it feels satisfying when it chips down. Like, stuff like Dota, when you're sort of mincing through a horde of creeps with some really powerful abilities, I don't want to be too critical. <laughs> a lot of the... It's not the kind of combat I usually find satisfying, but there's a load of health bars, and they're all going down. <laughs> and sometimes they all go down at once, and they all die, and that's really satisfying. So, yeah, interfaces can be really powerful that way. Uh, that's it for the lesson, because I think that's been a fairly long one. Um, uh, I appreciate that was maybe long for the amount of sort of... We didn't make the game that fundamentally different, other than the what I just said. Um, but I think we did learn a big new fundamental thing, like canvases and UI um, are a big deal. You'll need to, need to use them a lot. It will need to do... Um, menus and stuff on canvases and knowing how to make a canvas element appear uh, to match world space stuff is really useful. Uh, I'm going to be doing this a bit in uh, Tactical Breaches soon to, to kind of annotate some stuff that's going on in the world. Um, I'm wondering if there's anything, I mean, the mess around session, this is UI, <laughs> UI is not famous for being uh, super hilarious to mess around with. Um, we already did a, a growing health bar. I guess what happens if... Uh, oh, this would be just really dumb. This is not going to be particularly impressive, but uh, we could just have it expand in all dimensions. Actually, before I do this, uh, I'm going to do the thing I often forget to do and uh, zip up our current progress so that it will be available. Uh, yeah, we could have it the health bar expand in all dimensions. So that they... Oh, shrink in all dimensions. Let's make it expand in all directions by putting the fraction in there. Um, and let's also pass it the wrong fraction. <laughs> this is... Uh, there's no reason this will lead to anything interesting. But... Divide it the wrong way around, since so max health divided by current health. That's the bug I thought I had. Uh, so health bars get bigger as something gets more damaged. <laughs> yep, that's weird. I wonder um, if... Uh, what is it like if we just actually have it be the current health? Then it would shrink, but uh, start really big. <laughs> yep. Actually, mm, there's something. Oh, that's me. I'm the one with the huge health bar. Oh, oh, hey, look. I think we found a issue, maybe. Oh, no, we haven't. So it looks like they're off center, and I thought maybe that meant that our origin's off center, and we should fix that. Um, Boy, I don't feel like the plucky upstart anymore. I feel like the bully. <laughs> now that I, I can see this is how much more powerful I am than, than all of them, uh, I kind of feel like a jerk for destroying them all. Uh, this is a game design lesson I've uh, probably already spouted <laughs> multiple times, but uh, if, you, if the player feels outmatched, they don't question the ethics of what they do. <laughs> as long as you seem smaller than the other guy, you're just like, oh yeah, absolutely, I'll destroy that guy no, no matter what. Um, and uh, by making the health bar enormous, uh, I've created a very unmissable visual metaphor for our relative power, and suddenly I don't feel so good about killing everything. Um, which is uh, either means, hey, we should do this, because it gives a much more truer sense of the relative power of things, or we shouldn't because it reveals that we're this our game is a power fantasy about murdering things that are weaker than you. Um, the yeah, so it's it looks like it's off center. That's not an actual problem. The reason that's the reason we're seeing that is because we we've used a massive scale on this health bar. We can inspect it in fact and see it's a scale of ten. Um, 
And remember, we specifically told this thing, hey, keep your left side fixed and expand as far as you like in the right, or any expansion or contraction you're gonna do is in the right dimension. And so that's why it looks off center is because if you add a huge scaling factor to that and you say the left side can't change, then of course it has to go off center. So that's not revealing a, another bug, that's just a natural consequence of, of our excellent code, which is now done.